Assalamu alaikum my dear students once again welcome to my youtube channel by the name ms lectures and today i would be demonstrating you about a very important topic of the physiology that is the types of the shock so there are the three types of shock first of all we will discuss the non progressive shock that what is the non progressive shock we will discuss non progressive shock non progressive shock and its detail so in the non progressive shock following reflex reflexes are involved so what are those reflexes number 1 it is the baroreceptor reflex number 1 it is the baro receptor reflex so this reflex it will deal with the pressure blood pressure changes which occurs due to the shock definitely the pressure decreases due to the decrease uh, uh, in the blood volume so due to the fluctuations in the uh, blood volume uh, pressure actually decreases blood pressure decreases and uh, baroreceptor reflex is then initiated in order to counter that particular situation so after the baroreceptor reflex we have number 2 angiotensin angiotensin renin system which is activated angiotensin renin system so now angiotensin renin system what does it the it do it causes the vasoconstriction in the body extreme vasoconstriction in the body so, so what is the effect of the a vasoconstriction so effect of the vasoconstriction is that uh, due to the extreme vasoconstriction more blood supply is given to which the heart and brain which are the vital organs then we have the aldosterone aldosterone secretion aldosterone secretion so aldosterone secretion actually occurs in order to conserve the in order to conserve the blood volume so more aldosterone is secreted when the in the case of the non progressive shock in order to restore the or conserve the blood volume so it draws back the water from the uh, kidneys towards the blood so that the blood volume is maintained or conserved number 4 it is the cns ischemic response so this cns ischemic response is activated which delivers more which delivers more blood supply to heart and brain heart and brain then number 5 it is the reverse reverse stress relaxation phenomena reverse stress relaxation phenomena now what is this reverse stress relaxation relaxation phenomena so what is this reverse stress re relaxation phenomena so we know that uh, whenever there is the more blood so those blood vessels the wall of the walls of those blood vessels are stretched so that in order to accommodate large blood volume but in the case of low blood volume reverse stress relaxation phenomena occurs in order to you can say uh, constrict that particular wall of the blood vessel so that it can uh, you can say make the uh, the flow of the blood more comfortable so that wall of the blood vessel is constricted constricted because the blood volume is very much less so this is the reverse st stress re relaxation phenomena so now discussing about the number second type of shock that is the progressive shock that is the progressive shock so in the case of the progressive shock what happens that first of all the depression occurs cardiac depression occurs so cardiac depression it is the uh, dangerous condition in which the heart activity is uh, hindered uh, and because of the you can say less amount of the blood so cardiac depression occurs cardiac depression occurs then uh vasomotor centers are deactivated 
वेजो मोटर सेंट्रेट्स आर डीएक्टिवेटेड बिकॉज द ब्लड इज नॉट बींग सप्लाई टू वेट्स द ब्रेन सो फर्द मोर वट हैपन्स डैट इन द केस ऑफ द प्रोग्रेसिव शॉक दे इज दू कैन से कैपिलरी परमेबिलिटी capillary permeability occurs so why capillary permeability occurs because there is the less blood volume in the blood vessels and the and the speed of the blood flow is slow so that's why that blood becomes permeable towards the walls of the capillaries and that blood flows out of the blood vessels into the cavities so capillary permeability increases because of the less blood velocity number 4 what happens uh, blood clot formation occurs because of this slow blood flow so blood clotting occurs so this blood clotting due to this blood clotting and the slow amount of the blood flow what happens that release of the endotoxin occurs so release of the endotoxins occurs endo toxins occurs release of the endotoxin occurs so due to the release of endotoxins these endotoxins actually uh, invade the body or cause the degradations furthermore in release of lysosomes occurs release of lysosomes occur which causes the deterioration which causes the deterioration in the body in body these occurs so after this what happens that uh number 7 if we talk about the sodium potassium pump becomes inactivated sodium potassium pump becomes inactivated inactivated during the progressive shock and if we talk about number 8 factor what happens that release of endotoxins actually cause it uh, invades the body then lysosome in in case uh, you can say release of the lysosomes causes the deterioration in the body so that's why what happens that the formation of the necrotic plaques occurs in the kidneys and liver so necrotic plaques necrotic plaques formation necrotic plaques formation occurs in liver kidneys in liver kidneys so this is the result of the progressive shock now talking about the irreversible shock that what happens in the irreversible shock which is the number third type of shock irreversible shock is it is the condition in which there is no chance of you can say in uh, improvement in the condition of the patient because uh because of so much acidity which occurs in the body so due to the excessive amount of acidity which had occurred in the body the condition of the patient uh cannot be improved in the case of the irreversible shock so this is the dangerous condition so due to the too much acidity due to too much deterioration due to the too much formation of the necrotic plague Uh, the body the condition of the patient uh, cannot be you can say reverse back towards the normal so that's why this condition is very much uh, lethal so if you uh, give the blood transfusion if we give the blood transfusion so the condition uh, of the patient would be better initially but again the condition of the patient uh, would ultimately would go towards the worst condition if we uh, elaborate this uh, particular information in the graphical form so you can see that the graph would go high initially in the case of the blood transfusion but ultimately at the end it would drop back so this is the condition known as the irreversible shock furthermore the one there is a very important information to deliver you guys is that during the hypovolemic shock what happens that during the hypovolemic shock what happens during the hypovolemic shock there is the cold clammy skin so cold clammy skin is the symptom of hypovolemic shock you must need to remember this and 
in the case of the septic shock in the case of the septic shock fever is the most important symptom fever in the case of septic shock in the case of septic shock in the case of septic shock fever is the most important symptom you must need to remember and in the case of the hypovolemic shock in the case of hypo volemic shock cold clammy skin it is the most important symptom so this was my lecture about the three types of shock and hope you have understood it well last but not the least don't forget subscribe my ms lectures thank you